We have the crew taking on dragons, Homer facing off with Noella, two of the shining stars squaring off with two of the dark stars, Wise and Herman racing his time to stop the ship from exploding, Shiki up against a new member of the OSG, and above all of that, we have Happy versus Clown. Okay, in all honesty, the last one was the one I was the most excited about coming into these new chapters, because prior to the release of chapter 258, I went to write in and asked, hey, Clown, what happened to him after Lundard? And someone was kind enough to remind me that as far as we know, he was still on board Eden Zero after the ending of that arc. To which I replied, then doesn't that mean he would have been with them when they traveled to Universe Zero? Ergo, meaning that he more than likely has memories of the previous universe as well? Which we got confirmed in Chapter 259. And look, it's not just that I'm excited that my theory was correct, although it does always feel really, really good when it happens, but just the insanity that Hero decided to skip over a rematch between Sister and Clown and instead have Happy step up to the plate is extremely interesting. It'd be one thing if Happy was still an android cat like he is in the other universes, because then we could argue that he could at least use his guns to somehow take out the robotic jester. But in Universe Zero, Happy is just a normal cat albeit a blue talking one, but still a normal one with no weapons to defend himself. He doesn't even have the wings his fairy tale counterpart has. With every other fight set up these past few chapters, the crew at least has a believable chance to take down their foe, but happy beating clown, there's just, there's no way that should work. Which is why Hero took this moment to finally do something that fans have been dying to see happen for a majority of the series. He finally pressed Moskoi's button. Yes, that mysterious button that Hero has been constantly teasing us with since the character's introduction. We finally know what it does, and it is way better than I could have ever imagined. You see, once pressed, that button transforms Moskoi into his alter ego Cosmo, a suave older butler with a bit of a sadistic side to him. Actually, not a bit, he is extremely sadistic based on what we see in the chapter, which is seemingly the reason why Sister never wanted that button to be pressed, because apparently he is the only one actually able to make her, let's call it, submissive. But even though she didn't want it to happen, she should be thankful because his transformation not only got rid of the poison gas that was killing all of them, but he also was able to take down Clown in one single shot. Which admittedly isn't really that big of a feat because Sister was able to do basically the same thing in the previous universe, but still, for his very first appearance, this was actually a pretty cool showing. Now, moving on from that, I'm actually very hyped to see Witch and Valkyrie taking on Wizard and Brigadine. Obviously, the matchups we missed out on in the Lendard arc due to the formers being, well, dead. And this is a fight that us fans should be the most emotionally invested in because these pairs were each confirmed to be romantically involved back when they were humans. So we'll have to watch these former lovers fight to the death all while being none the wiser of their past connection. Or at least half of them are unaware. I'm not really sure if Witch and Valkyrie know about the fact that they used to be humans. We never really got a scene of Shiki telling them on screen. And if they don't, then that would actually make sense why they were the two shining stars you least interested in seeing Pino unlock her memories about them. Either way, we as fans not only know, but are getting more and more information with each passing chapter. So if one of them actually ends up dying during this battle, it's going to end up hurting even more. Luckily, we don't have to worry about that with Sister and Hermit, since it seems like they won't be fighting their Dark Star counterparts, more than likely because we saw those fights in the last big arc. Which means, just like Cosmo, we're more than likely going to see someone else step up to take on Killer. Personally, my vote's Laguna, simply because he doesn't really get much time to shine, and he's the only human member of the crew we've yet to see overdrive, so this could be a chance to finally do it. That is, of course, assuming that they can stop the ship from exploding, which they have less than 10 minutes to figure out how to. And normally I'd say this wouldn't be a problem for these two technical wizards, but something tells me Hero's going to keep them from being able to stop the countdown. All so he can give Pino a dramatic moment of waking up just in time to stop the ship from exploding. And then, after she finally wakes up and all the fighting's done, give the big reveal of what happened to the Earth 20,000 years ago. Which, let's actually talk about that real quick. In these flashbacks, we see that Sister has some mysterious illness that causes her to think the name Shiki over and over. All while we have Herman and Killer discovering that the Earth is very quickly dying, and that the only possible way to save it is to force the planet to overdrive. Now, even though we don't know if at this point during the flashback Herman has any connection to the other three shining stars, it's still obvious that Sister's illness and her discovery are somehow connected plot-wise. And while many think that these flashbacks were revealed that Mother is actually the Earth's overdrive, I think maybe the reason why Sister has Shiki's name in her head is because he is actually the Earth's overdrive, or at the very least a byproduct of it. Think about it, I promise you it's going to end up making a lot more sense the more of these flashbacks we end up seeing. But one thing we don't really have to think about too much is Shiki versus Lightning Law, because at worst their fight is going to end in a draw due to Shiki being forced to retreat for some reason. Because I mean, the odds of anyone beating Shiki in a one-on-one -on -one fight before Void is pretty much zero at this point due to the fact that we entered the final saga of the series. But hey, it still should end up being a pretty good fight. I mean, it looks like the OSG member has lightning-based abilities, so I'm actually looking forward to seeing what he ends up being able to do. Although, I'm just going to be comparing him to Laxus the entire time. 
Now, the real fight I'm probably the most concerned about out of all of them is Homer versus Agnuela. Because Homer is at a complete disadvantage here due to the fact that the two of them are currently fighting in space. And Homer doesn't currently have her customized Gundam suit that she uses for space battles and instead is stuck driving one of the normal mini ships that everyone else uses. Which normally would be fine if it wasn't for the fact that by her own admission, Homer is a terrible shot when using one of those ships and her opponent is one of the strongest androids in the entire universe. So unless Homer can somehow move her fight to the inside of a ship or to a nearby planet, I really don't see how she wins this one. But it's much more likely that we'll lose Valkyrie in her fight than it is that we'll see Homer die in this one. So just like Cappy vs Clown, Hero is going to have to bring a third party in to help Homer out in winning this one-on-one -on -one battle. And while there is a certain character that I'd love to see Hero use this moment to finally reunite him with Homer, I don't really care who ends up showing up as long as it means that we don't have to say goodbye to our favorite samurai girl.